Hello and welcome to today's show which is dedicated to the Festool Domino Machine and more specifically to this table that I built for it. I have no good name for this table but I use it for high precision domino cuts uh, especially on smaller parts. For those of you who own the domino I think this is worth watching as I see this table it, it makes the domino much more complete and versatile machine. I will start by explaining why I need this table and how it makes the domino reach its full potential on small parts. Then I will go ahead and explain the basics of the table and how it's built. And finally I will do some real joinery. I will make a small frame with mitre corners and I will make another small frame with butt joint corners. So you buy the most expensive joinery machine in the world and the first thing you have to do is to build a table for it. Well, no, uh, it works very well on larger pieces. This table is mainly for smaller pieces. If we look uh, on a wider part like this, the domino has a quite good landing surface, all the width here. It's referencing this pin and the cut, the center of the joint ends up somewhere in the middle. So for this, this size of wood, I've, I don't think you need a table at all. But looking at smaller pieces, we start with the butt joint here. Referencing the pin on the outside makes the cut center end up here and half the cut would be outside my piece of wood. Also it's very small landing surface for the domino and it, it's big risk that you tilt the machine when you make the cut. The same goes for this mitre piece here. It's a, it's a very small landing surface and the joint center ends up very far towards the inside. Well, then the smart guy say you can aim for a, a center line, like so, and not use the pin as the reference. And then in the other piece, the mating piece, you switch to the wider setting on the domino. And then in the, in the glue up process, you, you slide the parts to align them and then you glue them up. Well, for a butt joint piece, that, that could work, uh, but looking at the mitre red piece, if you have the wider setting in one of the parts, they will slide in the, in the glue up process. So here I really would like to use the narrow setting in both parts and I would like to choose myself where the center of the cut is. So just briefly before I give you all the details about how to build this beauty. I'll show you how it solves the two problems I mentioned, the stability problem and the center of the joint problem. Here in this jig the domino is bolted down to this piece of wood. Uh, I screws from the back side so the domino can't move. And when I cut the narrow piece it's referencing this surface here. So even if I have a very small surface against the domino it still has a very good reference on the side. So I slide that up against the domino and clamp it down with two clamps. I usually have one here as well. So that means the domino is fixated, the, the wood is fixated, and the stability problem is solved. The next problem was that these pins decided where the center of the cut will take place. And for me to decide that instead, I made the fence movable sideways. And that means I can choose where the center of the cut is. So, so if we take a closer look at the table itself then, it's about 60 by 40 centimeters, but you could of course use any dimensions you want. The top is made out of 15 millimeter birch plywood. I had this routed in T-tracks going in both directions. They are done with the Axminster T-track cutter that perfectly matches the, the Festool rail clamps. Having T-tracks in both directions means that I can clamp down a piece of wood just about anywhere and at any angle where I wish to have it. You also see some threaded inserts here, they are for attaching the side fence later on. These parts here you can see is an extension of the front of the domino. The domino sits in this opening here. And what is very important when you mount these extensions is that they are in line with each other. So what I did when I mounted those was to clamp down a straight edge to the top. Then I aligned the extension halves with the straight edge and then I screwed them down. What you see here are the two screws that I use for attaching the domino, which has some threaded holes in the back of the base. Uh, if we look on the back side, these are the screws that I use for attaching it. 
these here are some stabilizing pieces of wood. Uh, the top becomes quite weak otherwise with all those routed in T-tracks. When it's uh, time to use this table, I start by clamping a, a straight edge towards the fence halves. Then I have a reference for the, for the domino. Then I remove the domino base from the rest of the machine since it's more easy to handle this way. These are the holes that I use for attaching it to the, to the table. Then I slide the domino base against my straight edge, trying to find the holes from the back side and lock both the, the wing nuts. It doesn't matter where the domino ends up left to right, but it's very important that you push it against the straight edge. So now the domino is in position and in line with the right and the left fence. The fence itself is also made out of 15mm birch plywood. It fits both on the left hand side of the domino and on the right hand side. It's attached using these knobs that goes into the threaded inserts in the top of the table. Then I have some adjustability and then I lock it in position. It acts both as a side reference for the wood when I have the wood oriented like this and as a stop reference for the wood when I have it oriented like this. It also acts as a side reference for the wood when I'm making a cut on a, on a mitered piece like this. Uh, when you build this fence it's extremely important that you have a 90 degree angle between these two surfaces and a 45 degree angle between these two surfaces. So let's make some joints and we start with this uh, mitre edge frame. I have laid out the center of the domino here, you see the line, and that is where the domino will end up somewhere. Uh, I put some yellow tape on the top surfaces and that is to not mix up what's up and what's down. So the tactics for this will be that I set the fence according to my layout line, like so, and I cut all these four, one at a time, using this side as a reference. After that I flip the fence to this side here and I cut these four sides. The trick here is to remember the fence setting, because when you flip it there is nothing saying that the fence end up in the same position at the other side. I have several methods for this, I show one of them here and I explain another one later on. This one is based on that your pins are calibrated so they have the same distance to the center of the cut. Then I make a small piece of wood that is like a memory stick so that fits exactly between this fence surface and the pin. And later when I flip the fence to this side I use the same pin to align the fence on this side here and make the second row of cuts. So let's start. So the first four holes are done. Now it's time to flip the fence to the other side to make the remaining four cuts. Place it somewhere here. Then I use this little memory thing that I did before. I slide that up against this pin on the domino. And then I lock down the fence in this position. And this means that I have copied the fence position from the left hand side to the right hand side and that my cut will end up centered in both the parts. Then I, of course, remove this piece before cutting. So, that was all the cuts for the mitered frame. I will go ahead and make a dry fit of one of the corners, so we'll see if it 
fits as expected. That's what I would call a very well aligned corner. You have like zero gaps between the parts on the outside. Uh, all surfaces are aligned. So I would say this method works very well. So, frame is complete. Uh, it's not glued, it's just dry fitted. So uh, I will now make the butt jointed frame and I will uh, I will go through that a bit quicker because the process is very similar to the mitre edge one. So for the butt joint frame the tactics is quite similar but there are a few differences compared to the mitre frame. I put out some red and blue dots here uh, and that is so you easier should understand what I'm doing. I will start by making all the red dot cuts with the fence on my left hand side. That means this cut here, it means this cut here, and so on. And after that I will flip the fence to the right side and make all the blue dot cuts. Uh, and here I will show you a slightly different approach for flipping the fence in an exact way. The alternative way of flipping the fence in an exact way is like this. I already cut the red part and I aim for this line here. So I mark the same line on a piece of scrap. I flip the fence to the right hand side. I aim for the line. And then I measure with a caliper the distance from the outer edge to the, to the domino cut. And then I will adjust the fence accordingly to how much I was off from the red part. Uh, sounds complicated but quite easy, so I will, uh, I will show you. This is the real part, the red dot part. This is the scrap part that I just made. And what I do now is that I measure it with a caliper the distance from the domino cut. 5.3 on that part to the outer edge. 5.7 on the scrap part. That means I should move the fence 0.4 millimeter, so I show you how I do that. So to move the fence 0 0.4 then it should be moved in that direction. I have a dial indicator here, just uh, fastened to a piece of wood. Uh, I start that one and then I slide the fence until I'm at 0.4 difference. 0.42, good enough. So that's it. It's a very very quick uh, adjustment of the fence doing it this way. With the fence adjusted correctly, it's time to make the blue dot joints. So uh, I go ahead and cut those. Butt jointed frame assembled and complete and I have like zero steps here between the parts. Meaning that this method for flipping the fence works extremely well, just as the other method. So which method do I use? Well, uh, I used to, to go for this method all the time before. Uh, measuring with a caliper and adjusting the fence digitally. Uh, on a mitre part like this, it could be a bit tricky to, to get an accurate reading from the, from the cut to the corner and that's why I invented the other method that I showed before. Uh, I leave that to you to choose method for flipping the fence accurately. I will show you a few hints and tips uh, and then it's time to sum up this episode. So some final tips along the way and it's about centering the cut height wise. If you see the, the mitre cut that I, I did first today it's slightly off center, I wouldn't care too much about this, but if it becomes even more off center, I will need to adjust something. And to adjust for a thicker piece of wood, that means I need to raise up the domino, and then I have these plastic parts of different thicknesses that I place under the domino to raise it up. To compensate for a thinner piece of wood, like this one, I need to raise up the wood instead, and then, then I have plastic shims or plywood shims of various thickness that I can place under the piece of wood. Uh, final tip I would like to show you is that you of course could make additional fences at any desired angle and then you just clamp those fences from the outside in the T-tracks like so. Except from that I have no more to show you about this jig. 
it's a quite simple build. It's uh, it's easy to dial it in, so it works well, and it's very easy to get good results from it. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you very much.